Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I'm excited to discuss another new release of Pumatix in terms of them already updating the software, which is kind of funny because I've already discussed uh, the actual release the other day, and now there's a newer version of Pumatix. And whenever there's a new release, I'm always going to do a video update to give you guys a heads up as far as what's already come out. So I'm going to just double click on the Pumatix icon right here. And again, just so everybody is aware, I do have all of the modules for Pumatix, so your uh, software will not usually come equipped with all this, nor would you require it based on your end user preference. Um, the basic level of the software, step one, would include typically the milling three axis or four axis. In this case, I'm gonna stay with mine at four axis. I'm just gonna select okay. And now you can immediately see uh, a difference. One of the things you'll notice right away is, again, you've got the tab buttons right here. It says collapse this panel. I'm going to click on it. And as I do that, you can see your toolpath preview is now centered in the screen. Um, if we come over here and you've got all these tabs over here, you just click on them. And again, very, very intuitive, very simple. It just hides everything to make it nice and neat. You'll also know a positive and a negative symbol. And one thing I did not cover, I don't believe, in the previous video is that the positive and negative symbol allows you to basically add or clean up, so to speak, in terms of removing that feature and making it as clean as possible. If I expand the feed rate and if I decide to collapse it, you can see how everything kind of gets smaller. Okay. But again, you've got full feature sets. If you expand everything, you can see just how your screen really, really gets taken up. Again, you got your jogging, your spindle override control, all your features there, your mist, cool and flood mist, probing. I've gotten many questions already on that. You've got all the features for probing, whether it be X, Y, however which way you want to do it. Um, tool info, stock diameter, uh, and again, this will be for your rotary axis, depending if you have that mo expansion module. Um, rapid rate override feed rate override, and again, we can collapse everything if we want it nice and neat. Uh, another feature set would be uh, using the columns layout. This is pretty cool. If you want to click that, you can see your access control comes over. Your custom macros are over here. G codes over here. Very, very simple. <clears throat> if we click it again, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> you can see we've now got everything allocated in a column. So again, uh, depending on our preference, end user preference, you can do all that. And again, if you want to expand the tab, you can come in. Uh, you can see here I've just got a sample G code loaded. And if I zoom in, another cool feature is I can select areas of the G code. And you can see right here it went right to it. I don't believe I covered that in a previous video, but of course it does have it. Again, you've got your three-dimensional rotation. You do have your uh, legend here, so to speak, as far as what you're looking at, grid. You turn the grid on, off, your crosshair on and off. Uh, centering your, your actual tool path, you can zoom in, zoom out. You basically got every feature here, and again, reset tool path movement, just leave your mouse and it'll explain each of these. Once again, we're dealing with uh, the idea of staying as basic as possible in terms of explanation to make your life easier. Now, when I said to you that this is the latest release, we're going to come over here to help. I'm going to go to about. You can see version 3.4.2 build 21155. Now, you guys get these updates free. And again, <clears throat> not just getting a, a different screen set, but I'm going to show you one of the most powerful features. And I know Mach 3 does not have it. And I know Mach 4 does not have it in the sense that you can click on settings. Now, when we come over to our spindle, for my guys out there who've requested this, you can now use step and direction signals to control your spindle control parameters. Now this leads to a lot of different things. Uh, mainly it leads to you having the ability to use a stepper or a servo as a spindle, which for guys dealing with lathe movements, um, or lathe robots I should say, uh, this is really, really something that has to be looked at because again, you have maximum torque available where we're staying at a much lower RPM. And a lot of times you're going to be mimicking more towards, you know, professional type machines. This gives you a lot of leeway as far as what you want to use. You've got the discrete spindle control, of course, the analog spindle control. Now you've got step and direction spindle control and external spindle control. So, I mean, the feature set's amazing. You also, of course, have the spindle encoder PPR, which I did not discuss, I believe, in the first release video. But 
Again, this feature is disabled because it's not supported by this control, of course. Um, I just didn't activate anything with that. But again, you can definitely see here, now you've got your spindle control, so your RPM would be registered as well. Um, and that's something we have to think about because, again, I get a lot of questions on spindle control. And the biggest thing you have to realize with the earlier releases of motion control software, namely from Artsoft, is without an encoder, you have no way of knowing your actual RPM. Now, that may or may not be, a, you know, an actual uh, a hindrance, so to speak, to your machining, but I have no idea why anybody would want to actually include spindle control to see the RPM if it's not considered 100% accurate. It's kind of, kind of going backwards with that. So, again, it'll give you an idea in Mach 3 <clears throat> and, excuse me, Mach 4, but it will definitely not be as accurate as naturally having an encoder. Um, but, again, you can see... They're definitely not sleeping. Once again, uh, this is the screen uh, for the Pumatic server. I've had questions, um, can you run the software offline instead of being in a server format? Yes, you can. Um, something else I wanted to discuss briefly is that you can also run the so uh, or hook up the PLCM to run the software, <coughs> excuse me, in, um, or hook it up to an actual uh, switch or a router. Now, that's something that's never, ever been discussed with the ESS. It's not recommended to do. Uh, the PLCM, you can do that with, which now that transpires into a whole other area of expansion. So again, uh, we're dealing with a totally different unit. Once again, we're dealing with a 12-volt unit instead of 5-volt. And we're dealing with, again, all the cables with the unit are double-shielded. So you've got, again, the best options. You'll see that in the actual... Uh, user's manual for the PLCM. Those options are discussed. So again, lots of information, lots of uh, new things coming out. Like I said, I just actually did the video release on the software the other day, and I wanted to touch base on showing you guys just some changes that have already been done. And it just doesn't stop. I mean, they don't sleep. They're going to be dealing with this all the time. I've worked, once again, if you watch video two and you see Oleg's, Hello Vincent, uh, this is Oleg from Pure Logic Russia. As I've promised, uh, we've made an experiment for you using the driver G540 and our PLCM motion controller. All the settings and configurations are the same, so everything works perfectly. Please check it. Uh, there you could see uh, the way we've used your G-code. Please check another one. And there we've used a more complicated program. So as you can see, everything works perfectly. Thanks for your attention. Demonstration, and I recommend you guys all check that out if you haven't seen it, where he's actually running a complex G-code. It'll blow your mind on just how complex that G-code is. When I say it fills the entire 
toolpath preview it does and again the software handles it like nothing so again interesting interesting information interesting uh, in terms of expansion but the main thing is is that they don't sleep they're there to support us and again I wanted just to show you the latest features so again I hope this video has been helpful I'm going to do many many more uh, there's just a lot of information to cover with this a lot of content to discuss um, if you guys have questions require quotes um, need a consultation message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com uh, you'll also can message me through my eBay store the, the uh, links will be in the beginning and the end of the video uh, to all my subscribers I love you guys keep the questions coming uh, thank you all for your support take care